Hello, dear friends. Welcome to another study of the Spiritist magazine. It's always an honor and a blessing to be with you tonight. And here we are. And today, our inspiration is to talk about and remind ourselves of the importance of the Spiritist book. So the question I have for you is, what is the last spiritist book you've read? I'm going to share that this is the one that I've read the last because that's the one we, we are using as our gospel at home in our house and with our group here in Richmond, Virginia. So what kind of teachings have you taken from reading the Spiritist literature. Share with us what kind of books do you prefer? What are your favorite Spiritist authors? And what kind of book has brought you a significant message in your life and has impressed you and the teachings in there have been of use to you in your life? Those are beautiful reflections for you and I to meditate upon today. As a reminder, we are always, always going to encourage you to visit the website spiritistmagazine.org, right? We, we want to talk about Spiritist book, where a place where all of these ideas are published, a place where you can download the app, you can download the PDF version of the Spiritist magazine, or you can also download, actually order, not download, but order the physical copy of the Spiritist magazine. I happen to have one here, and you can see how beautiful the Spiritist magazine is. And this is a beautiful image of our much dear Euripides Barcenova. So you can have these teachings in your life and you can treat the Spiritist magazine as a Spiritist book because you're going to see the teachings we have here are going to do what Emmanuel is going to bring to us. You can even have this for your children. You can see here, these are stories published at the end of the Spiritist magazine where you will have, you can use the stories with your children to teach them this blessed doctrine of the spiritist knowledge to them while they are young and moldable as we can find in a gospel according to spiritism. But that's a conversation for another time. Today, we're gonna bring this article for you and we'll discuss it together. So it's issue 52, titled The Spiritist Book. The author is Emmanuel, and the medium is Francisco Cândido Xavier, lovingly known by, in Brazil, by Chico Xavier. And these uh, teachings come from the book Doctrine in Life, Doutrina e Vida, by several spirits from Chico Xavier. Unfortunately, this book is not yet in English. That's why we have the Spiritist magazine, so we can read those teachings in our lives. The first, you can see it is not a long, let me see if I can make the screen even larger for you. It is not a long article at all, but it will bring you and I many, many, many opportunities to learn and study the importance of treating the Spiritist books as jewels, as treasures in our lives. Many will first say, the edifying book is a liberating door. The spiritist book, however, emancipates the soul in the fundamentals of life. Each and every book, piece of knowledge that you and I can acquire for our intellectual and moral progress is a liberating door. Remember, we put our children in school, we were educated, we give ourselves the opportunity of learning how to read and write. 
so that we can have this liberating doors to learn and care for one another and to use our abilities to treat um, others, to build buildings and all of the many things you and I can do in this physical life. So a book opens doors, liberates us from our ignorance. Literally, when you ignore something, you can read about it. It gives you different perspectives. But the Spiritist book emancipates our souls. All right, so let me see. There you go. And how does it emancipate our souls? He will continue by saying, he will describe different types of books. I listed them here on the article. The scientific book, a philosophical book, a merciful book, a legal book, book of law, a technical book, a farming book, a book on farming and agriculture, an etiquette book, a consoling book, an informative book, and a noble book. He's going to talk about the qualities of these books and contrast it with what a spiritist book brings in addition to all of those teachings found in all these kinds of books. A very didactic way of breaking down the concepts so that you and I can take what a scientific book can bring to us is a merciful book, a legal book. We're saying all books are liberating doors, opening doors for us, but a spiritist book emancipates the soul in the fundamentals of life. And then we are reminded right now of the importance of treating it correctly, of maintaining it on its original form, of sharing responsibly, of supporting the movements of bringing these books to fruition, to life and fruition. And many of us say a scientific book delivers one person from illiteracy, but a spiritist book delivers us from cruelty so the intellectual laurels do not deviate into delinquency. So a scientific book can bring you knowledge, it can make you do create medicines, vaccines, treatments, bring discoveries to science. But a spiritist book delivers us from cruelty. And intellectual laurels with all of those books should not deviate in delinquencies to the point that I think because I know more, I'm better. I know more because I have more opportunities of knowing, because I know how to read and write. And we have to think about the millions of souls on this earth who do not have yet the ability of learning. So they can deliver themselves from illiteracy and they can pick up a scientific book and know. Isn't that beautiful? The merciful book delivers one from desperation who at some point in life doesn't have that hasn't felt despair, right? But the spirit this book delivers one for, from superstition so that faith does not generate into fanaticism. fanatism. And then you're going to talk about knowing spiritism, the spiritist doctrine, the spirit manifestations, the importance of science and faith in our lives, but a reason faith, so we don't become fanatics and think that only spiritism is an all and be all. Spiritism complements the teachings that you and I find in the Old and New Testament and brings, sheds light on our spiritual nature and the moral implications of knowing that you are an immortal soul. So all of the books that we read today, we most certainly will take with us that knowledge to our spiritual lives and there's many, many lifetimes. So no matter how much you read, if you retain that knowledge, it goes with you. Very few things in this physical life we can talk about taking with us. But when you read, when you learn, it becomes imprinted on your perispiritual memory. Then from lifetime to lifetime to lifetime, we can bring those teachings. Emmanuel continues by saying the legal book delivers one from injustice, 
However, the spirit this book delivers one from partiality so that justice does not become an instrument of oppression. So the books we have in the earth that carry laws allows us to deliver humanity from injustice. So we have appropriate consequences to the actions that you and I have and the law of society dictates we need to work together so laws are important to keep order safety within and cohesion within the society yet the spiritist book delivers us us that one is us from partiality from being partial so we don't use our points of view as justice instruments as instruments of oppression, so that I don't think I have the right to impose my views into others. I don't think that if people don't follow spiritism, they won't be delivered, they won't be saved. So this is a combination of using the spiritist book to deliver us from cruelty, delivering us from superstition, so we understand the better nature of ourselves, and delivering us from being partial to our own beliefs to our own circumstances, to our own upbringing, to our own set of values. Because remember, as much as we are children of God, so are the people who are in our lives who may or may not agree with us. And then we leave divine justice to deliver us the consequence of our actions. The etiquette book delivers one from harshness in treating others. If you're of certain age, you may have taken home education classes, home economics class, and you know how to behave on the table, how to say things to others, very important skills in society that brings us to a better way, orderly way of living with others. There are some things we should do in the presence of others. What does this spiritist book do? It says, delivers one from irresponsibility, which many times transforms the home, into a tormented stronghold of suffering. So this spiritist book will prevent us from being irresponsible or for even understanding the responsibility that we have when we are brought in together in one family, in one household, so that we can all learn from one another. So that we don't, we don't use our abilities and talents and we don't let our passions overcome us to the point that we transform our homes into strongholds of suffering. Isn't that wonderful? So the Spiritist book will complement the books of etiquette and how we learn to behave in the presence of others. The consoling book delivers one from affliction. However, the Spiritist book delivers one from inoperative ecstasy so that comfort does not settle into laziness. If you notice a pattern here, you're going to notice that the first thing that Manuel says, let's go back there, the edifying book is a liberating door. So each and every one of these books are sacred, spiritual, higher spirituality has allowed us to have those teachings here because not all of us know of spiritism. So when people read from all of these books, they take deliverance from illiteracy, they take deliverance from desperation, deliverance from injustice, delivering deliverance from harshness, deliverance from affliction. So even in that detail, you see the mercifulness of God in our lives. Because each and every culture, each and every religion, each and every group of people have those books that serve serve to those who are still yet to know of their immortality, of reincarnatory plans, of the law of cause and effect, they can read a consoling book and be less afflicted and help themselves feel better. But when we read a spiritist book, we go into inoperative ecstasy. What does that mean? Inoperative, we're not operating, we're just enjoying our comfort of our lives and we are not operant of co-creation with God to help each and every person. In these moments on the earth where this is going to air, we have a lot of affliction. 
and we cannot stagnate in our comfort that turns into laziness and not help those folks and not give of our, ourselves in order to help those beings that are in more need than you and I. Because ultimately we are here to serve the will of God in everyone's life. And then we do that by mo monitoring our own selves, our thoughts, our emotions, our ideas, and ultimately our actions the way you and I have agency in the world, so that I can be mindful of where I am, how I want to be, and then of the needs of others around me. So that's a beautiful message. You say, an informative book delivers us from delays, but the spiritist book delivers us from wasted time so that empty hours do not drag us into us to a fall into this graceful debt very similar to what he was saying here, that we don't stay on this inoperative ecstasy. So we don't waste time. We use the minutes and the hours that we have in our lives to serve others. Because we will most likely fall into debt when we don't use the resources that God has given to us in this lifetime wisely. How do I know that? Let's go to the book, Messengers, by Andrea Louise. And the good spirit is always coherent with the book, the teachings of spiritism as well, because there is um, a lot of labor in the spirit's book, on the third part of the spirit's book. But in Andrea Louise, in the book, Messengers, he will show to us groups of folks who were highly prepared in the spiritual realm and reincarnated Weren't, were or were not able to, the majority were not able to fulfill even part of their reincarnatory plan, wasting plan, wasting time with um, less than important activities, interests, persuasion, so on and so forth. So this, you can see how the scientific nature, as a scientist, I can tell you, the scientific nature of spiritism, when you see the fundamental work, and then the other authors come and bring to us. It's always additive. Science is additive. When you see today the medications we have, when you see today the COVID vaccine, 50 years in the making, that technology, 5 zero, 50 years in the making of the new technology. Now we are ready to receive it. And each and every scientist who made a little bit of a progress adds to the whole is the same here in the Spiritist Doctrine. The books of Allan Kardec, the books of Leon Denis, Emmanuel's, Andrea Louise and High Spears, Joana de Angelis, Fru Divaldo, Manuel Filomena de Miranda, the books of Euripides Barcenovo, so many. You see, it's a building, a building of knowledge. It's the coherence within this. So that's how we know we shall use our time wisely. Let us support the respectable book, which light is today. However, let us assist and disseminate this British book, which is light today, tomorrow, and always. For example, this book here that I told you was the last one. I try to read a, a, quite a fair amount of books, but this is the last message I read this week and it was published in 1950 1950 if you picked up this book today and started reading it's still current and that's the difference between a regular book and a spiritist book why let's talk about the scientific book here the scientific book delivers us from literacy. However, science evolves. So we build and we build, we build. The laws, a legal book, may become obsolete because new laws were built for the culture of the time. The teachings you see here are of the interactions between Jesus and the apostles 2,000 years ago, still current. 
The etiquette book might change. Still helps removing, delivering us from harshness in the treatment of others. No doubt it adds value. But the way we put our table 200 years ago, we set our tables and the many different ways we put the dishes and the cups and the and fork and the knife have changed, right? Today, we barely have time to eat on a table. Most of us eat on the go, unfortunately, which is very detrimental to health. As a health outcome scientist, I can tell you. But the Spiritist book, though, is current. Today, tomorrow, always. I was looking because I have several books around me, but not at, in, within reach for us to discuss. But this is the one that comes to you. So that's why we study. That's why we need to disseminate the Spiritist book. And that's what we're doing today. Because this message is in a book that yet to be translated and published in English. The group of the Spiritist magazine, the team of the Spiritist magazine has translated this message. And that's the message I'm bringing to. Actually, I'm, I'm bringing correction. I'm bringing part of the message. Because if you notice, I listed a bunch of books in the beginning, types of books, and I'm only doing part of it because of time, because we want to keep it concise. And a teaser for you to go to the spiritismagazine.org and download this issue, issue 52, so that you can go and read for yourself and make your own conclusions and share with, the, with your family members and friends the importance of treating the Spiritist book with utmost respect as a sacred, blessed gift from God, the Creator, to all of us. And he will say, The noble book delivers one from ignorance, but the Spiritist book delivers one from ignorance and from evil. Evil being when you deviate from God's laws, you are incurring in evil when you align yourself your behavior your thoughts your the way of being with the laws of god we are co-creating in goodness with christ he ends this message by saying those who consecrate themselves to jesus christ learn to bequeath a better world onto those who follow their steps hmm? so we are making the world a better place by means of offering fraternal support and goodness to those with whom they commune in their habitual work. So when we consecrate our lives to Jesus, promising, making a commitment to bequeath a better, um, better life to all in the world, when we say, Jesus, show me the way, help me learn so that I can make the world a better place, so that I can offer support and goodness to all of those who come my way. The moment I know I study, I will be inspired perhaps to offer a suggestion for a reading, for a teaching, even help people realize their spiritual nature the immortal nature, even without mentioning of spiritism, spirits or mediums, because we need to tailor our words, our message to the audience. And sometimes the audience is not ready for all of that, but the audience may be ready to understand that there is more than the flesh. That what we are going through today shall pass, that the Consequences of our actions lead us to where we are today with the caveat that where you and I are today is not only a consequence of our actions, but also the grace of God in our lives. Because God will and always is be merciful towards us. And slow, little by little, through pain or through love, we will pay all the debts we have towards humanity, the ones we've encountered, and towards Mother Earth, the ecosystem of the Earth, and we'll be able to 
deliver this bequest, a better world onto those who are following the steps of Christ. So we want to learn to deliver this better world and so that we can offer fraternal support and goodness to everyone. No, remember here, they commune in habitual works and that's the beauty of spiritism. When you recognize the blessedness of having these teachings while incarnated on the earth, because in the spiritual realm, we have to earn the right to read and serve, or right? you have to serve to earn the rights to do those kinds of things. It's all around the um, the books of Andrea Louise. We have this while we are in this lifetime reincarnated. And then we can be you, I, our friend, me, other workers of Christ all throughout the earth. Each and every one of us have that circle of influence. The people who are I come in contact with are different from the people you are com coming in contact with every day. Therefore, we can all learn to make this world a better place. We can learn to offer fraternal uh, assistance and goodness to everyone. Imagine if we're all committed to do this, to even just one more person tomorrow, throughout the day, if you're watching this during the day, how much better the world would feel in these moments of difficulty on the earth. Hmm? Dear friends, remember, let me know what kind of, what what's your favorite spiritist book? What was the last spiritist book you read? What kind of teachings are you learning? And I hope that this reminder of the sacredness, of the importance of this spirit's book in our lives can be helpful to your life. Remember, visit spiritistmagazine.org. Always, always very, very important for you and I to be in touch with the teachings. The Spiritist Magazine program comes live to you or on demand, if you're watching this on demand, on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can download the app, the PDF. You can order the physical copy by visiting spiritismagazine.org. And remember, you can always go to the YouTube channels and find the playlists and listen to this on demand while you go about your day to seek that inspiration and goodness. I hope that you have a blessed day or blessed night. Stay well, stay safe, take care of yourself, and if you can, care for your loved ones and those on your spiritual and physical circles. Thank you very much, dear friends. It's always an honor and a blessing to be with you. Bye-bye.